Luke Easel and Man, and welcome to the introduction to the series. Now, in this introduction, I want to give you a sort of understanding of the layout and interface of this device, uh, the routing of this device, so you can get started and have an understanding of how to use it. And also as a sort of foundation for all of the demonstrations I'm going to do from here on out. Before I get started, I want to warn you, if you're someone who's looking for a cool synth jam, this is not the video for you. Uh, there's going probably there's going to be relatively little playing at all in this. It's mostly explanatory. So um, leave a comment down below how angry you are that there's no performance in this and move on. Uh, next, I want to point out, yes, I do work for Bukla, but this is not a commercial. It's not even a review. I don't do commercials or reviews. I do demonstrations. So I am demonstrating the Bukla easel command. I'm going to show you how the functions work. And as per usual, I only demonstrate synthesizers I really, really like. And this instrument is an instrument I really, really like. So it's likely that you will hear me say complimentary things. You have the right to agree or disagree. And uh, mostly, I just want to show you how it works so you can decide whether this instrument is right for you. Okay, now let's dive into this. For the many years, well, not many, for the several years I've been working for Bukla, I've had a, a singular situation frequently occur, and that is uh, people will walk up to the booth, they'll stand in front of the easel, they'll look at it in awe, and they'll say something along the lines of, you know, I've been playing synthesizer for 20 years. What's going on with this thing? <laughs> And it's a fair question because this interface is different than the interface you will have seen in many electronic instruments throughout history. And that's because it was designed in 1973 by one of the innovators of the whole electronic music instrument concept. Uh, Don Buchla was right there at the beginning and uh, wanted to uh, design interfaces that suited his intentions. He, there wasn't uh, other people that he could look around to and pick and draw from. He just did what made sense to him uh, for what his intentions were. So the easel has a layout that might be somewhat foreign to you or completely foreign to you, as it was to me the first time I took an easel home. Uh, there was a little bit of exasperation. I believe I did utter the words, I'm a synthesizer expert. Why don't I get this? So yes, it's not easy initially because we've all been sort of laboring under a really standardized uh, synthesizer interface format for decades now. And although this supersedes and precedes a lot of those designs, um, a lot of us are, have rarely seen an easel. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in this video is just give you a sense of the signal path and what you're looking at to get this thing going. Okay, I'm going to compare this to a more standardized synthesizer concept because all of the functionality is there. It's just that the routing and the signal path is a little bit different. So if you know how to operate a standardized, typical synthesizer interface, this is very close. You're only a step away from understanding this one. I'm going to give you some uh, tips about how this is like what you're used to using. Okay, let's get started. I'll stop yapping and then yap more. Okay, let's start off with the complex oscillator. Like any other electronic instrument, the, the oscillation is where it starts. So the complex oscillator is normaled, which is to say connected, to gate one of the dual low pass gate. So that is your initial routing, complex oscillator, low pass gate. So I'm gonna need to explain a few things to you if you're not familiar with Buchla. Low pass gate, gate is a different term in Buchla land than it is outside of Buchla land. The gate is actually the VCA and filter combination. The dual low pass gate is a unique Buchla construct where he has combined a six decibel per octave filter with a VCA. So basically, you're getting the same sort of signal routing as you would in a typical synthesizer. You have oscillator going into filter, going into amp. It's just that the filter and the amp are connected. And those of you who uh, delight in sort of characterizing, quote, West Coast, I'm sorry, but <laughs> there are two filters in the easel going all the way back to the beginning. 
there are two filters. There are six decibel per octave uh, low pass filters and they are connected to the VCA. You can use them independently. You can use just the filter, just the VCA, or both of them in combination. Um, so here is a demonstration of that. You'll see we have this in low pass filter mode. So the output from the complex oscillator, I have just uh, increased the frequency of the filter cutoff and then decreased it again. We could do the same thing with the amp or the same thing with both of them together. Of course, when you want to activate a note on the easel command, uh, you're probably not going to want to have to continually use this level slider, which just increases the voltage. You'd probably like to have it activated by something like an envelope. So let us head on over to the envelope generator to have a little bit of an understanding of that. The envelope generator, you'll notice, unlike all these other settings, is completely up high. That's not a mistake. The envelope generator, unlike all of the other settings, starts at the top and goes down to increase, uh, which is one of those things that will really thwart a person if they're not expecting that. So right now, your attack, your sustain, and your decay are all at zero. So if we want uh, a signal to <laughs> come out of the envelope generator, we're going to have to bring something up. I'm going to bring up the decay, and I'm going to press a note. Okay, you can see it's being triggered, but nothing's happening. And why? It's because you have to tell the easel command where you want that, env that envelope generator to be directed. So that's what we're going to do. Here. This is a shorting bar. This was Don's idea for uh, the novel way to direct voltages in the easel. So we're going to use that. And what are we going to do? We're going to take the output of the envelope generator. Uh, let me give you a quick uh, sort of indication of the patch field here. The patch field, all of the colored jacks are outputs for various functions that are color coded for those functions. So when I was pointing at this orange one, uh, the envelope generator output is orange. So you're getting the envelope generator coming out of this orange jack. All of the black jacks are inputs. So all you have to do is direct the voltages coming out of the color jacks into the black jacks to get outcomes that you desire. Right now, we would like to direct an envelope to the low pass gate, gate one of the low pass gate so that we can hear the complex oscillator when we press a note on our controlling device. So now I have connected the envelope generator to the black input. We need to raise this to control how much that voltage that's coming out of the envelope generator into this input controls the filter cutoff point and the amp. So that's what we're doing right here. Here we go. So right now we have a relatively typical arrangement compared to what you would normally expect in the more standardized synthesizer paradigm. We have the output from the complex oscillator going into the filter and the amp as controlled by the envelope generator. Now, if we wanted to hear just the low pass filter, we'd switch to low pass filter. Or if we just wanted to hear the amp with no filtering. Or if we wanted to hear both simultaneously. Okay, so that is one signal path. Now, the cool thing about the easel is that you have the possibility of multiple signal paths. For example, what about our modulation oscillator? Okay, one thing I would like to remind you, the modulation oscillator in the original easel was not intended really to be just another audio oscillator. It was meant to be a modulation oscillator to affect the complex oscillator. Now, when they recreated the easel in about 2013, uh, it became more of a typical standard second oscillator. So you might say, uh, how the heck do we hear that oscillator? Well, it is normaled to, you might expect, 
gate two, as long as you have this switch here in the center position, which we'll talk about more at length later. But right now, make sure that's in the center position. And so uh, we're gonna do the same thing. The modulation oscillator is going into gate two. So if we want to control that using another voltage, uh, something we can do, which is really cool and unique to the easel, is the pulsar. Now, the pulsar is not just one thing. It's actually basically three different things. It's the clock for the sequencer, which is cool. It is a sawtooth LFO, which is also cool. Uh, but for our purposes right here, if we have it switched to keyboard and sustained or trans, it doesn't really matter, it will act as an envelope gener generator, a sawtooth-shaped envelope generator. So we go over here to the yellow jack, which is associated with the yellow color of the pulsar, and we can plug that in to the input for gate two, which is normal to the modulation oscillator. Let's bring up the voltage. Right now, it's a very long sawtooth envelope. If you'd like it to be shorter, you're gonna to have to increase the period. And of course, right now we're listening it to, we're listening to it going through the amp. We could set it to the filter. Or both. Okay, so now let's listen to both of them at the same time. And uh, you can do things like, would you like uh, your envelope to be super short and the pulsar to be longer? So uh, what we're basically saying here is keep in mind that you basically have two complete instrument channels uh, that can be controlled independently. You have independent oscillator control, you have independent filter control, you have independent amp control, and you even have independent volume control. Now, one of the things that will happen to you with an easel, if you're not familiar with it right off the bat, is that you will plug it in and you'll even set up this exact patch I have and all of a sudden it'll be like, well, why is there no sound? And it's because there are a lot of different ways to stop the sound. It's one of the uh, things that happens when you have a very powerful instrument that has a lot of functionality. You increase the opportunity for you to be able to not create any sound. <laughs> so um, keep in mind that channel A, this channel A volume right here controls the amplitude of gate one. The channel B controls the amplitude of gate two. So make sure you have both of those up. Now, it depends on the jack that you're coming out. If you're coming out of the jacks here on the top or the jack, the quarter inch jacks in the back, you need to have your master volume up to be able to hear it. So you need these two up set to whatever you need them to be and the master volume up for you to hear a sound if you're using the typical output jacks. If you're plugged in the phones, uh, you can use the monitor level. You still need, you don't need to have the master volume up, but you'd still need channels A and B in order to hear what's happening. So that is a very basic start to what we're dealing with. Of course, with these functions like the envelope generator, there's a whole bunch more that can be done uh, with them. I'm just basically getting you very simply started. I should also point out that if you want to, you don't have to uh, control your amp with the pulsar. If you want both uh, oscillators, the complex oscillator and the modulation oscillator to have the same envelope, you can stack your patch cable into the output of the uh, envelope generator and use that same output to control gate two so uh yeah you have a lot of options of course if you want to you don't even have to <laughs> use a typical functionality to control the gates you could use uh 
the random output or the sequencer or any number of things uh, to control these, but we're just trying to give you a basic setup. So um, complex oscillator goes into gate one, modulation oscillator goes into gate two. You can control whether they are filter, whether they are amp or both. Make sure your mod oscillator your gate two source switch is in the center so you're getting both of them sent independently to channel a and channel b volumes set those to what you'd like them to be and turn up your master volume you should be able to create a sound now keep in mind a couple of other things before you go if you want the oscillators to be controlled by an input whether it's midi the control voltage inputs on the back or even the key, the Buchla keyboard inputs on the front, you need to have the oscillators set to on in the keyboard section. That's super important. If you want to hear your modulation oscillator, which is to say you want it to be a high frequency oscillator and not a low frequency oscillator, you're going to need to have it switched to high, of course. And uh, of course, you have the ability to tune them and you undoubtedly can figure out how to set the waveforms and pitch and frequency, depending on what you want those to be, are your friends as far as how uh, you control those. Okay, so that is a very basic setup and a very basic explanation of the signal path of the Buchla Easel Command. <laughs>